Happening now, a Jamestown man is accused of dousing a person in gasoline, then threatening to light them on fire. And the city has been awarded a big grant, which local lawmakers hope could improve safe routes to school. Plus, an update on the plan to raise through a toll prices here in New York. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. Thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Those stories and more are coming up, but first, this just into our newsroom. New York State Police reporting today a dramatic increase in drug overdoses and related deaths in just the past two weeks. From January 27th to today, troopers received reports of 94 heroin overdoses, including six deaths across our region. They say a more lethal strand of heroin is being distributed here in western New York. In the southern tier specifically, Chautauqua County 20 overdoses and three deaths in the past 12 days. Naloxone, commonly known as Narcan, has been administered 57 times during this time frame. Police say our rural areas lead to a longer medical response time, which can contribute to fatal overdoses. If you or a family member, friend, or acquaintance are struggling with opioid use, police urge you to seek help. For more information on the resources available, visit CombatAddictionCHQ.com. A Jamestown felon is headed back to prison after he was convicted and sentenced for criminal possession of a weapon. On Monday, the Chautauqua County District Attorney's Office announced 56-year-old Carlos Rivera was sentenced in county court to two to four years intermediate in state prison, plus one year of post-release supervision. Rivera was arrested by Jamestown police last October after a loaded Taurus 40 caliber semi-automatic pistol was discovered in his possession. And a Jamestown man is accused of dousing a person in gasoline and then threatening to light them on fire. Officers with the Jamestown Police Department responded to the area of West 7th and Washington Streets during the 1 o'clock hour Monday afternoon for a disorderly person call. Nathan Strickland was accused of dousing a person in gasoline and then threatening to light them on fire there. The 42-year-old was arrested a short distance away from the scene and taken to Jamestown City Jail without incident. Now, the department says Strickland was charged with second-degree menacing and held in custody pending arraignment in the case. Well, the city of Jamestown's remaining American Rescue Plan Act funding is quickly dwindling, with local leaders now prioritizing what gets funded next. Our Bronson Rasmussen joins us live from the newsroom today with more on how much funds the city has left here. Bronson? million dollars in American Rescue Plan Act funds. The city of Jamestown received in early 2021. Only a few million dollars remain now. Lawmakers are mapping out where these funds will go next. The grand total allocated 25,000 or 25,306,148.24. The award is $28,079.100 or 79 and 145 leaves us with a balance of Two million seven hundred and seventy two nine ninety six point seven six. According to those in the city's Department of Development, projects made possible from ARPA funds have created and saved several jobs. We are currently around the three hundred thousand range of funds dispersed into business owners, and so far we have had twenty one that twenty one distinct unique businesses that have been funded. 10 buildings have been revitalized, 10 roofing projects, 119 jobs will be expected to be created, 20 new products and service, and 341 jobs saved. While the city does have almost $3 million left over, the wish list far exceeds that amount. The wish list that is still out there is impossible to meet because that totals $1.46 million in wish list expenses by either department heads, the mayor, or whatever the case may be. So in light of that, we have some serious things to consider going forward. Um, but basically, we're left with $2.77 million. The next step for lawmakers is to prioritize what to fund with the remaining ARPA funds. An example of some items currently being considered is the purchase of a new ambulance 
and installing some splash pads at various city parks. Reporting live in the newsroom, Bronson Rasmussen, WNY News Now. All right, Bronson, thank you very much. Well, the city of Jamestown, they've been awarded $200,000 to help fund improvement street improvements. The U.S. Department of Transportation and Federal Highway Administration announced the money as part of a Safe Streets and Roads for All Action Plan grant. Now, according to local officials, the funding will focus on improving safe routes to schools. Jamestown was one of 500 communities nationwide selected to receive the money. The allocation was attached to the bipartisan infrastructure law, which was passed in late 2021. Well, now let's switch gears and get a first check of our weather forecast today. Chief Forecaster Andrew Stevenson joining us with a live look at that. And uh, Andrew, notably, one of the things we were, we were talking about yesterday a little bit, this freezing cold weather is nowhere to be found uh, this afternoon. We got uh, peaks of sun and it feels kind of like spring out there. Back to cold, back to spring again. That's how it's been feeling like this winter so far. Right now, our live look over Chautauqua Lake, mostly cloudy skies out there. Actually, with the warmer weather starting to break up some of the ice that we have out there on the lake. First defense Doppler radar shows sunny skies across eastern portions of the area, but clouds are starting to build in across western, western New York as a weak cold front begin, will cross the region later this afternoon. You can actually start to see some light rain showers out over Lake Erie that will move through this afternoon. The high yesterday was 35 degrees. The low was 27. The records for today, the high 67 set back in 1991. The record low, negative 8, set back last year in 2002. So for the rest of the afternoon out there, mostly cloudy skies, some light p.m. rain showers showers will move through this afternoon. Breezy conditions as well with a south wind of 13 to 60 miles per hour, 13 to 16 miles per hour gust 25 to 35 especially near the lake shore but temperatures today in the mid to upper 40s. I'll have a look at the full forecast details coming up in just a few minutes Justin. All right Andrew we'll see you back in a bit as we continue this half hour an update on the proposal to increase throughway toll fares here in the Empire State. And later, the world-renowned author at the Chautauqua Institution attacked last summer, now speaking out in his first official interview. Stay with us. WNY News Now will be right back. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. So you think you can cook? We're looking for chefs ready to test their skills. Competing in a charity cooking show competition that features a platter of unusual ingredients, including popular local cuisine. Judged by a panel of local celebs, chefs are tested in three rounds before a winner is crowned. So you think you can cook? Register online at stsusancenter.org. Produced by Channel 716. All proceeds raised benefit the St. Susan Center in Jamestown, New York. Looking for a fair and honest auto mechanic? Look no further than DeWyas Auto Service. Located at 140 Main Street in Randolph, our family-owned business is ready for all of your automotive needs. From general service to more complex repairs, count on DeWyas Auto to keep you on the road. We not only keep your cars running smoothly, but also looking great with our expert detailing crew. Send us a message on Facebook or call us today at 716-358-2292 to set up an appointment. DeWyas Auto Service. Fair, honest, and the best prices guaranteed. Have you ever wanted to live out your dreams? Hunt, fish, in all corners of the earth? Well, now's your chance. Follow Primitive Patriot Outdoors as we live out our dreams and show you how to live out yours through outdoor adventures. From Western New York to Africa to all corners of the earth, Follow us on this adventure. It's an experience you've never seen before. Blood and Lures, Roku TV, Channel 716. 
EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. It's the first week of hearings in the legislative budget, and the first topic on the agenda is transportation. Our New York State Capitol correspondent Elise Klein breaks down the highlights of the hearings and updates us on the progress so far. On the first official day of budget hearings, lawmakers discussed Governor Kathy Hochul's state budget proposals on transportation, targeting investments towards New York's roads, bridges, airports, rail facilities, transit systems, and ports. Some lawmakers feel New York's roads and bridges funded through the Consolidated Highway Improvement Program, or CHIPS, should be a priority in the legislature during these budget talks. And our local roads and bridges through the CHIPS program is the lifeblood of our upstate transportation network and we need to make sure that we're providing resources to take care of our, you know, for our local municipalities. The governor's budget proposes maintaining funding for CHIPS at $577.8 million, the same level as last year. Funding also remained the same for highway aid and local bridge and road repair programs, including Pave Our Potholes program at $100 million, Pave New York at $150 million, and Bridge New York at $200 million. David Miller from the New York State Association of Town Superintendents of Highways says the price of construction materials has increased 25 percent over the past two years, and they need more funding. There's just not enough, and uh, we don't want to get in a situation where these bridges start failing. We've got to shut them down and detour people around. 87% um, of those roads out there are locally owned um, by villages and towns and um, counties. And for us to keep up with 87%, we need a little bigger piece of the pie. And without an increase in funding, Kevin Rooney from the New York State County Highway Superintendents Association says there could be consequences for local road and bridge repair programs. If we don't have some more funding, we're going to cut our programs, every one of us. Um, these are the local programs, so the towns, the counties, the villages will all have to do something and work a little harder to try to get our work done. In Albany, Elise Klein, WNY News Now. At least, thank you. And during this week's state budget hearing, lawmakers questioned the New York Thruway Authority's proposed toll hike. Monday's question and answer session comes on the heels of a New York State Comptroller report urging the Thruway Authority only raise tolls as a last resort. The Thruway Authority is seeking to change the Easy Pass per mile rate to 0.047 cents in 2024. The current rate is 4.5 cents per mile. The toll would jump to 4.9 cents per mile in 2027 if the proposal is approved. While some state lawmakers, like Senator George Borrello, challenged the hike, saying the transition to cashless tolling was supposed to save money, others argue the price hike is warranted. Just in the last two years, our, our equipment and, and vehicle costs have gone up by 40%. In 2010, structural steel was $1.31 a pound. It is now $4.08 a pound. That's 212% increase. People have gotten raises over the last 14 years. So that primarily is the, is the reason that it's been 14 years. Now, before a toll hike takes effect, the Thruway Authority says they will host public hearings on the matter, but they didn't provide a specific date. Comments can be made online via email to tollcomments at thruway.ny.gov. Well, Salman Rushdie granted an interview with The New Yorker, the first since he was stabbed at a speaking engagement here in Chautauqua County last August. In a wide-ranging interview, the award-winning novelist called himself lucky, saying his main overwhelming feeling is gratitude. Rushdie treated this photo Monday calling the New Yorker's photo dramatic and powerful. He says his photo is what he actually looks like. Rushdie lost vision on one eye in the attack at the Chautauqua Institution that left him hospitalized for six weeks. 
He still lacks feeling in some of his fingertips and says it's difficult to type. In the interview, Rushdie says there is such a thing as PTSD. He says it's hard to sit down and write. He's also rethinking his approach to security following this attack. The 24-year-old accused of stabbing Rushdie, Hadi Matar, has been charged with attempted murder. He's currently at Chautauqua County's jail. Well, the Super Bowl is just a couple of days away, and with all eyes turned to the big screen that night, a lot of people might not be paying attention to just how much they might be drinking during the big game. Getting home safely after this annual celebration, it's important. WENY's Matt Coven learned about impaired driving, and uh, you can help plan ahead for after the party. The Highway Safety Network hosted a safe driving simulation to show how drinking can cause impaired actions. And today we are here on Mansfield um, University campus to uh, talk about Super Bowl safety weekend uh, with the Super Bowl coming up and making sure that the kids aren't uh, driving or allowing other friends to drive distracted or impaired. Impairment does not just mean drugs and alcohol. It can also mean you are too sleepy to drive. After the Super Bowl is when emergency rooms see most of their impaired patients. What we see a lot of potentially are car crashes, and they're not accidents. Accidents just don't happen. You could have done something to prevent that accident from happening. Health officials say it's best to prepare before you start celebrating, and it's as simple as two steps. If you wait until you're already drinking to try to decide how to get home safely, it's already too late. You're impaired and not making great choices. Have a plan how you're going to get home safe before that. If you are a party host, make sure that you are taking the keys from anybody that is too impaired to drive. Offer plenty of non-alcoholic beverages and offer plenty of snacks. As part of a demonstration today at Mansfield University, students and trainees of the Police Academy got to do a simulation comparing driving sober to driving after having several drinks. The hope was to show that even if you feel fine, you may be impaired. Well, college students and um, teens actually fall into an age group where um, crashes are a leading cause of death. So often with crashes, we find impaired driving a factor, speeding. Um, if you're impaired, often you make other bad decisions such as speeding or not wearing a seatbelt. The main message from today's event, plan ahead and remember that drinking can affect you beyond the time you stop drinking alcohol. So have a plan to get home safely following the big game. Reporting from Mansfield University, Max Coven, WENY News. Max, thank you. Coming up next, President Joe Biden is giving his State of the Union address tonight. Our Washington, D.C. correspondent is breaking down the big topics on the agenda. And later, we hear from experts in our community about autism diagnosis rates in children tripling. But first, when we come back, Andrew has a full look at our weather forecast. Stay with us. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. So you think you can cook? We're looking for chefs ready to test their skills. Competing in a charity cooking show competition that features a platter of unusual ingredients, including popular local cuisine. Judged by a panel of local celebs, chefs are tested in three rounds before a winner is crowned. So you think you can cook? Register online at stsusancenter.org. Produced by Channel 716. All proceeds raised benefit the St. Susan Center in Jamestown, New York. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tight. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org.
WNY News Now is covering stories that matter to you. There are two silver linings here. One, that no injuries were reported. And two, they were able to contain the fire from spreading further. Western New York has a new congressional member representing them. One of the things that made Betty White so unique was the fact that she connected generations of fans throughout the decades. Take a look at the uh, display here. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Fast, accurate, and every day. First events weather. Welcome back to WNY News Now. Currently in downtown Jamestown, we have mostly cloudy skies out there. The current temperature is 43 degrees at the Jamestown Airport with a south wind of 20. Wind gusts reported at 26 and it feels like 34 degrees. Here Look at the sunrise this morning from Justin over Randolph. A beautiful picture of the sunrise. And if you have any pictures, weather pictures you'd like to share with us, you can share with us on Facebook or Facebook social media using the hashtag MyLocalDopplerX. So here's the NOAA 8 to 14 day temperature outlook, which is the haves and haves and not, have nots. Half of the country over on the West Coast, they'll be with below average temperatures if you split it down the middle in the middle of the country they'll be dealing with temperatures at or, or near or at average and across the east coast where we are we'll be dealing with above average temperatures through february so if you like the colder air you have to go west if you like temperatures right where they are go in the middle of the country and if you like the warmer temperatures you can stay right where you are here in the east coast here's what's happening across the northeast right now not much happening at the moment we do have a weak cold front that's off to our west that's going to bring a few light rain showers through the afternoon but it's going to stay all rain as temperatures are in the 40s today so let's time it out on future scan future scan does show the rain showers right now if I'm not sure what's happening in the graphics, but rain showers will be moving through light this afternoon, but they will be light sh rain showers. Changing over to wet snow showers tonight. We start the day off tomorrow with cloudy skies, but the sun should break out by the afternoon with partly, partly the mostly sunny skies to the rest of the afternoon. And then the clouds will be on the increase as we head into tomorrow night as another system will be moving across the area on Thursday with another round of rain showers. So the next seven days, well, Temperatures will be warmer, warmer than average. We'll go with the 30s tomorrow, back up into the 40s, close to 50 on Thursday. Mostly, mostly cloudy skies on Friday with temperatures near 40, and then we bring in a chance for a few snow showers on Saturday with temperatures near 30, Justin. Yeah, certainly the roller coaster of these uh, crazy temps are continuing. Andrew, thank you. Well, let's get some headlines now from around the nation and police in McKeesport, Pennsylvania, near Pittsburgh, are mourning the death of one of their officers. Investigators say several officers responded to a suspect, suspected domestic violence incident in McKeesport on Monday. Police say when officers confronted the suspect, he pulled out a gun and opened fire. He hit two officers. 32-year-old Sean Sanunsky died of his wounds. He was a two-year veteran of the force. A second officer, Clarence Thomas, survived and is out of the hospital. A third officer shot and wounded the gunman who was taken to a hospital. He's reported in stable condition. The gunman now expected to face several charges. Well, on Tuesday night, President Joe Biden will deliver his State of the Union address. Now, last year, he talked about unity and coming together as a nation. And this year, political analysts expect Biden to do damage control from recent scandals. Our Washington, D.C. correspondent Rachel Knapp has more. One of the things that uh, the president really needs to establish is that he is in control. He has energy and he has competence. Todd Belt, the George Washington University Director of Political Management, says people's confidence in President Joe Biden is a little shattered following the discovery of classified documents found at his home and office. Belt believes the president might not address the documents investigation, but he expects the president to make a strong case that he is still up to the task of being commander in chief in his upcoming State of the Union address. He's going to talk about the economy and he's going to connect the policies that he was able to pass through the last Congress to a lot of the progress that is being made in terms of infrastructure and in terms of jobs. It's always about jobs with Biden. He's always blue collar Joe. And that's one of the things that he's really going to tout. Belt says we're seeing more layoffs happening, especially in the tech industry. And some worry we could be sliding into a recession. Consumer confidence is a big issue. And so I think that he's going to 
try to talk a little bit about how things are turning around in the economy and that we don't need to worry about that. Belt says there's one thing to also look for in his address. And that is how the president is really going to portray himself and the Republican Party, because we know that they've got a number of investigations that they're going to be mounting against him. And he's going to try to cast those as being very divisive. Remember, one of the things that the president talked about in his State of the Union address was unity. And if he can cast the Republicans as being very divisive and really playing political games with these investigations, that can really help him. At the Capitol, Rachel Knapp reporting. Rachel, thank you. The newly elected Arkansas governor, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she'll deliver the Republican response following Biden's speech. That responsibility is usually given to an up-and-comer in the party that does not control the White House. Well, a fire rages over the site of a train derailment in Ohio after a controlled release of hazardous materials was performed at the site. A new large plume of black smoke followed the boom of the controlled release in East Palestine, Ohio, Monday. A Norfolk Southern Railway used small charges to blow a hole in each of the five train cars carrying vinyl chloride the, that derailed on Friday. This allowed the chemical to spill into a trench. They then ignited flames to burn it away. Officials say the potentially explosive chemical was unstable and they worried it could send toxic fumes and deadly shrapnel into the air if exploded. They believe this operation to burn off the materials should take several hours. Authorities have evacuated a one-mile to two-mile area around East Palestine as a precaution. The zone expands to two states. Well, next, we're hearing from medical professionals who say autism diagnosis rates in children have tripled in the past 16 years. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. So you think you can cook? We're looking for chefs ready to test their skills. Competing in a charity cooking show competition that features a platter of unusual ingredients, including popular local cuisine. Judged by a panel of local celebs, chefs are tested in three rounds before a winner is crowned. So you think you can cook? Register online at stsusancenter.org. Produced by Channel 716. All proceeds raised benefit the St. Susan Center in Jamestown, New York. Something more than a birthday is happening here. Once you can see it, you can help. The sooner you recognize the signs of autism, the sooner you can make a lifetime of difference for your child. Start by answering a few simple questions at screenforautism.org. Welcome back. Autism diagnosis rates in children, they've tripled in the past 16 years. That's according to a new study published in the journal Pediatrics. So just why are we seeing higher rates of autism? Area News Now's Marissa Thomas spoke with local autism organizations to find out more about the news. As autism rates have gone up throughout the years, one might question why. A big reason behind the increase might be growing awareness. Working with our pediatricians, schools and providers becoming more aware, people are starting to see um, those signs of autism earlier. And so we are ultimately getting more diagnoses, even if maybe the frequency of autism isn't occurring um, more readily in the population, we're just more aware of it. With increased awareness of autism, the process of diagnosing ASD for doctors has improved. So we're doing a lot better at diagnosing, identifying individuals uh, at a younger age during their toddler years. There are uh, signs now pediatricians have that when they're doing their well baby checks where they can go through and be able to identify early on if an individual needs further evaluation. And getting an early diagnosis can make all the difference. This early intervention is such a key component to better outcomes for individuals that are identified as living with autism. With the number of people living with ASD, the resources available 
aren't meeting the needs of the community. So it is a never ending stream of phone calls. And I know that doesn't just go for Kaleidoscope, that goes for all providers in the area. We simply can't keep up. There's just so much need and not enough staff to go around. Marissa Thomas, Erie News Now. Marissa, thanks. That's it for us today. News continues 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com.